No better way to start off the morning than to piss off your neighbors. This is the VRX RHX1003K. And it looks awesome. Really awesome. I'm gonna start off and be really clear, I know absolutely nothing about Nitro RC. Whoa! It's got one of those big shiny things with a lot of tubes and curly coils coming out of it. I put it out in the community post to you guys. I'm getting one of these things and I got tons of responses, good, bad. And one comment that really stuck out was this, make sure you warm head before mission start. <laughs> this Nitro thing is easy. All jokes aside, I truly don't know what I'm doing. I ask a lot of questions because there was no manual. It just came with that piece of paper. First of all, it's really heavy. It looks really clean and well assembled with hex hardware throughout. You can adjust the toe and the camber, droop screws to adjust the ride height, and nice thick aluminum. Like that is a beauty. It's really good looking. It looks quality, man, like really quality. And aside from the VRX branding, this actually says FTX. So that got me thinking and I dug into it a little bit. It turns out it's the FTX Bonsai. It was easy to find some videos on that, especially from this guy here in the corner. So it didn't come with much out of the box. It came with these nice wheels, like really well glued. Got some good grip to them. Some body posts, hex pins and nuts, obligatory wheel wrench and some Allen keys and some body clips. So it has no body and it has no transmitter receiver. So I'm gonna throw in a Dumbo receiver and use this DDF350 transmitter. This thing is really nice, by the way. I did a video on it right there. That was actually pretty straightforward and easy. Now these came with it, but they're not really gonna match the body. These little cheapies though, definitely will. And they look awesome. And they're directional too. Ooh, very fancy. So I'm gonna take that and these and take that and shove it in there. And then we'll come back. <laughs> yeah, that looks sick. Before we get this started, let's talk about the body here. Yes, look at that. This body was from my first Tamiya kit. It was a TTO2 and I didn't know anything about painting bodies or what to expect. So I was in the hobby shop with my daughter and I said, what color should I paint it? Pink, dad. And I, I was like, you got it. I only use it a couple of times, so why not bring it out of retirement? Before we fit it up, let's try to get this running. If you're into electric, you're not gonna have this stuff or this stuff. It's a whole new world. You're gonna get a little filler bottle and nitro and this big wrench here. I'm assuming this is for your head. You need this battery to heat up the glow plug. Getting a good one is key. This is kind of a cheapy one, so hopefully it works. I've had this on charge for like eight hours, but it says two and a half to three. A couple of crappy screwdrivers. Oh, and another wheel wrench. Perfect. So nitro stands for nitro methane. This is off-road 20%. They told me this is what I need at the hobby shop and I trust them implicitly. Mm, a vintage. Hmm. I thought it would smell like gas. It actually smells fine. No, that's that's a bad idea. <laughs> no. No, don't. <laughs> that was kind of lackluster. I was hoping it'd be like, oh, gross, oh my god. But it actually smells like I think Windex has a stronger smell than that. <laughs> Use the old Tomley RC trick here. Oh, oh, that's probably too much. Yeah, that was too much. <laughs> I think slightly damp is what we're going for. Much better. Okay, so this is how they say to do it. Put it in here, give it the old squeezeroo. Oh, cool. All right, cool. It's starting to rain, but I think we're ready. <laughs> Actually, kind of excited. Oh, cross your fingers. <laughs> so, I didn't record it, which would have been hilarious, but I was giving it some tugs and it just took off and literally drove halfway across my yard. Oh, you can see the tire tracks. <laughs> 
So I got it running, but I had to go chase after it and kill it. So I gotta figure out what's going on with this throttle body. I'm just gonna let that cook for a while. That's loud. <laughs> you see my breath in here. I'm gonna let that thing run a tank through, make myself a cup of coffee, field calls from the neighbor, and hope the rain stops. Uh... While the third tank runs through, take a look. I did a little bit of detailing on the body. I cut a hole for the airflow, and then I yellowed out the windows to give it that Gran Turismo look. It's windy and it's cold, but at least my neighbors don't complain about the noise. I think it's a good place to burn off some blue. Let's take a look at it one more time. It's never gonna look this pretty again. That ran out of fuel surprisingly fast. It makes sense that once you lean it up, you'll probably be able to run a tank a lot longer. You are very cool. I'm in a new quieter location and I'm gonna try leaning it up. I just feel it's just not very fast. It's torquey, yes, but the overall top speed, meh. Those stairs are like a cheese grater. This is a lot of fuss. Maybe a bit too much fuss, really. <laughs> That sounds way faster now. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's a lot faster. Feels a lot faster now, anyway. Ah. Uh, uh, uh.
poop. <laughs> Ooh. The more the motor breaks in, the better it gets. That was really starting to get fun, man. But I realized I've spent more time chasing it and fiddling around with it than I have actually driving it. So be aware, if you're new, that might be something that turns you off right away. Oh, that sucks. I was gonna finish off that tank, but it's probably best just to take it home and lick our wounds. So is nitro really worth it in 2024? Short answer, no. No, it is not. Take it with a grain of salt, because that's just my opinion. Like, look at the state of it. Ugh, nasty. I'm sorry, nitro diehards. If you love it, you love it. I struggled. I loved it when I loved it, but when I had to mess around with it. <laughs> ah, crap. Tinker with it. And just get it running, get the body shell on and then it would stall. Oh, the frustration levels. But it's cool and it's visceral and man, it feels so punchy. It's a neat experience. If you like fiddling with this stuff, this might be right up your alley. And if you want this chassis, there's a link below. It's pretty cheap. If you want to try to get into this or at least try it a few times, you won't be totally out of pocket. Because for the sound and the visceral awesomeness that comes out of these things, it's worth it. It's just not worth it every day.